Hi guys, it's Jim here from drtangenstein.com and in this video I'm going to talk about a slightly different slant on automating your brew day. Now those who've been watching for a while will know that I am a huge proponent of all-in-one homebrew systems. I think that they're quite convenient, you know, they, they allow you to control mash temperature very well um, and basically overlook your brew day making it run quite smooth. But some people just aren't quite sold on the idea of an all-in-one system. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, that they're not scalable. So, you know, if you buy a five gallon or a 10 gallon system, that's what you're stuck with. Um, you know, people may feel like they're, they're kind of sacrificing something in, in, in some way in buying an all-in-one system. And, you know, most people just already have a system that they like to use and, you know, that they've used for a long time and they don't fancy just throwing it in the bin and, and getting something new. In this video, I'm going to talk about something that might be a bit of a game changer for those people in particular. I've managed to get my hands on this for a while. This is the Einbrew 1V1P brew controller. Now, Einbrew, a fairly new player on the on the homebrew uh, circuit, they're certainly certainly up and coming. Let's let's say that. This, the 1v1p, it's the smallest uh, brew controller they offer. They, they do go um, larger in scale than this, um, but I think this is perfect for the, for the home brew market. And basically, I can use this in conjunction with an old brew system that I have uh, here. I just have a big old stainless steel pan uh, sat on top of a, an induction hob, uh, which isn't quite um, perfect, but I'll, I'll explain that later um, and this is perfectly integratable with the 1v1p all I need to do liter literally all I need to do to convert this into an all-in-one system using the 1v1p is switch out my old manual uh, thermometer here at the front for this new temperature probe and I'll, I'll do that now just to prove how easy it is Voila, my old, I don't know, what well, this soup pan just became a brand new all-in-one brew system. Now, this is a, you know, this is everything you need. You know, it's a small box, um, just has controls here on the front. Um, set your, your timer and your interval for maybe a mash interval or a boil interval. Um, this is an alarm which goes off, uh, I don't know, when you need to mash in, when you need to add your other hops, when you brew at temperature. Um, this is kind of just a way of directing the, the program and uh, this is your play stop pause just like on you know, like an old CD player or something. Um, the just a, I don't know, not a warning but just a, a, a mention I guess. Uh, the bottom here is the, the power in and out. This is where the thermometer plugs in, nice and handy. Um, this here is the input, just a regular sort of kettle lead like you would use with an, an amplifier, like uh, an all-in-one system perhaps. Just clicks in there. Now, the way that they have you plug your uh, brewing equipment in is using these female uh, kettle leads. I, mean, I always call it a kettle lead. Um, these female components. And that slots in there for the um, elements, the, the heating controller, and um, there's a slightly different shaped one for the pump so that you don't, uh, so you don't mix them up. Now, I will just say that the, there is a small amount of wiring required. I mean, it's unlikely that your heating element or your pump comes with um, this connection, you know, this purpose-built connection. 
Um, all you need to do is rewire it. It's just like rewiring a plug. And if you don't want to go chopping your equipment up, you can try and do something like this. Um, like I've done here, I've just uh, wired an uh, extension lead to it. I don't think this is perfect. The idea of this is to make it all kind of waterproof so that you don't, so that you don't have to have open plug sockets around. Um, for me, for the purpose of this video, this was fine. So we're basically all up and running now. Um, I've wired my plugs in. My temperature probe is neatly inserted into my mash tun. Let's fill it up and get brewing. Okay, I'm just gonna run you through now the actual operation of this thing. So, you know, how do you take it from box to brew day sort of thing. Like I said earlier, um, I've just plugged my temperature probe in here. I've got my pump in here. My heating element is in this inlet and this is the, the power cable, the, the whole, to the whole brain of, of the entire thing. Uh, like I did kind of allude to earlier, um, you can't just go ahead and plug your, your element or your pump directly into this thing like you can with other temperature controllers out there, you have to kind of rewire your plug to, into this sort of female inlet. Um, it's not a lot of work, to be honest. If you can rewire a plug, you can do this. Um, and I think it's to stop like water leaking onto extension cables and things like that. So it's probably actually a good thing. Um, the official line from Einbrew, if I can get it in is that you should get an electrician to do it. I'm not an electrician, but if you want to do that, then you can do. Okay, so I'm just gonna flick it on now. Quick beep. That beep just kind of lets you know that everything's okay. It does a series of very quick checks just to make sure there's something in all of these ports and that it can read everything. Uh, see here, the temperature is 17. That's the water that I've just um, pulled out the tap. So let's dive in. The first thing to set is your preheat. Now, the preheat is kind of an obvious thing, uh, but it actually makes a hell of a lot of difference. Uh, this is the temperature at which you set it to, it'll heat your water to that and just leave it there until you decide you wanna dough in or, or whatever you wanna do. This seems like a really obvious, boring thing, but not all systems have it and it's a, it's a really nice thing to have. Um, so I've set this to 70 degrees here. So I'm gonna heat my water just past uh, mash temperature. And when I go in, the temperature will drop a little bit. Okay, operation here. If I press set, it'll take me to a series of settings, most of which you don't wanna bother with. There is a setting on there for um, the unit. So uh, whether you want Celsius or Fahrenheit, which might be useful if you're, if you're over in America. Um, and there's also a setting on there where you can set the maximum run temperature of your pump. Um, my pump runs, runs fine at really high temperatures, so I don't have to bother with that, but I assume if you were to uh, change that, it would cut your pump out when uh, your work starts to get above that temperature. So quite nice. A lot of the settings you don't really wanna mess with though. So instead of pressing set, I'm gonna press select. And this moves me on to step one of my mash. ST1. 50 minutes it's set to. I'm going to leave it at 50 minutes. Um, I'm just going to change the temperature, put the temperature up slightly though to 67. So that's the temperature I, I kind of like to mash at most of the time. Uh, 67 for 50 minutes uh, works well with me. So I'm just going to, now if I press set, it takes me to step two. Um, so this is step two of my mash. Uh, 15 minutes. Uh, this, I'm only going to do a single infusion, so this is going to kind of be my mash out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 10 minutes and just, just 80 degrees, you know, just enough to, to get things moving, uh, kill those pesky enzymes and all that stuff. So if I press um, set again, it'll offer me a stage three. So if you did want to do some kind of decoction mashing, uh, you, you know, you, you can do multi-step mashing here. Um, I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, at this point, I have my two steps of my mash sorted. I don't want any more, so I'm just gonna press select. Moves on to the boil. 
boil. There's only one temperature to boil at. It's boiling. It has boil detection. Um, I don't know how that works, but it seems to. So I'm going to set the boil for one hour. This at the bottom now, it used to be your temperature, but like I said, there's only one temperature to boil at. So this instead now becomes your, um, your power. So this is power 30, which is uh, 3000 kilowatts. You can go down, you can't go up. I don't think it runs higher than that. Um, I'm gonna leave it at 30 because if it does start to overboil, if it starts to overwork, it's fully interactive. You can just turn it down whilst, it's, whilst that's going on. Okay, so boil. So if I press set now, it starts, it takes me to my hops, my hop uh, intervals. And this just, obviously it doesn't add your hops for you. It just gives you a little beep when, uh, when you're supposed to add your hops. Hop one, I'm gonna add straight away. No worries. Hop two, 20 minutes. Hop two, in this case, I'm gonna add at 30 minutes. This is counting down from 60. It's gonna be uh, 30 minutes. Um, hop three, for me this time, it's just gonna be a flame out. So I just want a little beep just before my boil stops, just to let me know, have you got your hops ready? Because they need to go in. And that's where I'm gonna leave it, just uh, three boil hop additions. Um, it's 2019, of course I've got plenty of dry hop additions to come. Another cool. This doesn't actually cool anything. You see all the ports are full here. It doesn't cool anything, it doesn't control anything that would um, provide a, a cooling effect. What it does do is it allows you to monitor the temperature using this probe. Um, so when you've got your immersion chiller, when you've got your plate chiller, whatever you like to use, whether you just leave it out in the open, um, you can monitor the temperature and it'll let you know when it's time to stop cooling. So that's pretty good because I get quite anxious. You know, if I've got an immersion chiller running with, with water pouring down the drain all the time, I get quite anxious. I, I, I always tend to check on it a bit too much. The 1v1p is gonna let me know exactly when it reaches that temperature so I can transfer from kettle to bucket. So um, that's my that's my schedule. Let's get brewing. Okay, so we're just coming to the end of the preheat stage. I've set it to 70 degrees just so that when I put my grain in and stuff, the temperature will drop a little bit and we'll be at mash temp. So I'm using uh, just a regular old nylon uh, brew bag. It's quite big, uh, big enough to fit the vessel. Now you can use, uh, you know, well, use whatever you want, but I reckon you can, you can use something like this or um, maybe a false bottom or something. Um, if you do decide to, oh, there we go, so that's the, the alarm just sounding um, to let me know that it's at temp now. So basically all I need to do is cancel the alarm. Now it doesn't cancel the preheat, that just, that just keeps it there, it just stops it from making the noise. And the little beeps you hear are my element switching on and off, which is possibly why it's better to use um, an actual submersible element rather than uh, a hob like I've got. Now, the thing with using these nylon brew bags is they aren't necessarily, like they're heat resistant, but if you, took, if you make contact with the actual element, it's gonna melt the bag. So whether you're using a hob, if you're using a hob like this, keep it off the bottom. Um, my temperature probe's actually doing quite a good job of that at the minute. If you're using an element, make sure it's far, like the, the bag itself is actually far away from the element. Um, right, okay, so I'm gonna dough in since we're at temperature, and then I'll uh, fill you in on the rest. Okay, so I'm all in. Now all I need to do, this is, and this is the last, literally the last um, control I have to do to, to this now, is just press select, to move on to my stage one, my, my mash, my mash stage one, and then press green. And that now counts down from my stage one. 
Okay, this is uh, the 1V1P, not just the 1V, so it also controls my pump. Now, the pump control is pretty easy. It's a, it's a play, stop button. So you press and hold this for play, you press and hold it again for stop. Now, it has quite a good uh, function on it, which is um, almost like a prime function. Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a sec. Um, when you press go, it'll shut the heating element off and it'll just give, give the grain a little time to rest um, whilst the pump kicks in. Um, it also just does a few little spurts just to make sure that the, that the, that the pump is, is primed, you know, that, that all the lines have, uh, have liquid in them and then it just goes about it. So let's, um, let's just do this, pump on. There you go, see it's stopped now. Here we go again. Third time lucky. There we go. So I'm just going to leave that in there now. Literally put my lid back on and just let the controller do the rest. Okay, so we're on stage two now. Um, last time I left you, I was just doing in, uh, setting the mash going. That went absolutely fine, perfect. Uh, stayed plus or minus 0.2 all throughout, which is good. Um, then it went straight on to my mash out, which was 80 degrees. Um, so it's now sitting at that. I don't really, I, I always program it in, but I don't like to leave it at that for too long. So in a minute, uh, my, my pump's off. I'm just gonna remove this grain um, squeeze the bag or don't, it's up to you. I'm not gonna make a judgment on that. Um, and then the system's just gonna take me over to the boil. It'll start boiling once it reaches, uh, once it actually starts to boil, uh, it'll beep, let me know. And then after that, it'll beep periodically to let me know that it's ready to put those uh, hot portions in at the time that I told it to. All going well, should be perfect. Let's get rid of this grain. And we're done. Just finished uh, the boil, just come off the boil. So we're now in the um, cool down uh, section of the program. Uh, you'll know it's cool because it's got a blue light on it. Nice. Basically what happens now is you put any kind of plate chiller, immersion chiller in there. The system doesn't actively cool anything, but it allows you to monitor the temperature so that you can, again, just go off, um, obviously make sure all your water pipes are in the sink and not in the bathroom floor like mine was. And um, it just lets you know when your work gets down to, to pitch in temperature or whatever temperature you want it to. It's pretty nice. Um, the, the boil the boil went, went well. Um, I, I guess the, the cool thing about all this is, you know, even though I've set maybe my mash temp earlier on, or now I've set my, uh, my, my cool temperature, you can just change it. It, it, it's fully interactive. So, so during the boil, for example, there's a couple of moments where um, it looks like it's going to boil over. So you can just you can just alter the power setting just just right there. You don't have to stop the stop the program and come out of it. It's it's really interactive as it as it's going on, which is a, another really nice feature. So I guess now that my brew's wrapping up, I should probably let let you know what I've thought of of this system as a whole. So. I mean, it, it's kind of weird because the system as a whole, you can just, you can see it all right there. You know, it's, it's just, it's just that. I mean, it, it's, it's honestly, I, I like it. It looks pretty cool on the wall. Makes you feel like a professional brewer. Uh, obviously I've got these, um, all these wires dangling down here, but you know, this is a studio set. You know, if I was had it in the garage or whatever, it, I could, I could make it look cool. Um, if you have a big pan that you really love, um, maybe you have a, a, a sparge water heater as well, you have any, a heating element, you know, why, why not just at least give this thing a shot? Um, like I mentioned earlier, I've used, here I've used a, an induction hob. 
Now, induction hubs are really good. Um, this is a three kilowatt induction hub. Um, they're pretty good. Um, for this system, I don't think they're perfect. If you were gonna invest in the um, 1v1P and then also maybe invest in another piece of kit, I would get an actual submersible uh, heating element. Just because it's very, very fine control that it has. And I think it's better to do that from within the liquid than from underneath it. This particular system, the 1v1P, can handle elements up to uh, three kilowatts. Uh, so this. Um, so, I mean, that's, I mean, I've just done a five gallon batch here. I think you could probably go up to about 60 liters with a three kilowatt heating element. That's quite a lot of beer, you know? I mean, if, if you kept 60 liters of beer, that's that's three, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot. Um, yeah, so all in all, if you have a setup that you really love, go ahead and look into this. It's, it's an all-in-one system without being all-in-one. I mean, you know, as on a personal note, I mean, obviously I love all-in-one systems, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention here that the clean down of this is actually, it's so much nicer than any, any all-in-one system I've seen, just because it's so light. You know, the pan only weighs as much as the pan weighs. The, the hob only weighs as much as the hob weighs. So on a cleanup perspective, um, the 1v1p wins. If this is maybe a bit small fry for you, if you fancy going for one of the bigger boys, like I said earlier, Einbrew, really up and coming company. Uh, again, it's it's like a it's like a playground over there. Um, they have they have bigger, mo much bigger models. Um, you know that can control multiple vessels, multiple pumps. Uh, so why not check them out? In the meantime, uh, check me out on Twitter at Dr. Tankenstein. Head over to the blog drtankenstein.com and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.